This fifth generation Ford Mustang GT came from the factory with a 4.6 liter V8 rated for a paltry 300 horsepower. And while Mustangs aren't exactly admired by the car community at large, these 2005 to 2010 models are even held in low esteem by fellow Mustang enthusiasts because of their lackluster performance and potential. Even with mild engine upgrades, these Mustangs often still can't keep up with newer Camaros, Mustangs, Challengers, and imports like the Kia Stinger. But I don't really care about any of that. I like how these cars look and I'm a sucker for a good underdog story. So for the last few years I've been building up and tweaking this 2007 Mustang GT to get as much power out of its small displacement V8 as reasonably possible. This includes a full exhaust system, high lift cams, a stroker kit, and a whole lot of tuning. And now that I've recently finished installing a stronger 6-speed transmission and shorter axle gears, this thing is about as quick as it's going to get until I install my turbo kit. So to see how well my Mustang stacks up now, we'll be racing a number of cars that would normally beat the pants off any naturally aspirated 4.6 Mustang. The first car we'll be racing is a 2001 Chevy Corvette. This iconic sports car is powered by a 5.7 liter V8 LS1 mated to a T56 six-speed manual transmission. This Corvette has been lightly modded with a cold air intake and exhaust, so it's likely making north of 360 horsepower and 380 pound-foot of torque. And at roughly 3,200 pounds and a drag coefficient of 0.29, this Corvette is the lightest and most aerodynamic vehicle we'll be racing today. Corvette holds its own in first gear, but once we shift into second, the Mustang just pulls and pulls, leaving the Corvette in the dust. Next up is a stock base model 2014 Mustang GT. It's powered by the first gen Coyote engine, which is a 5 liter dual overhead cam V8 rated for 420 horsepower and 390 pound foot of torque. This Mustang also has a 6 speed manual transmission. <laughs> While I didn't expect to lose, I thought the 5.0 would put up more of a fight. We tried starting at a couple different speeds, but my Mustang always came out on top. This is my best friend's stock 2015 Camaro SS 1LE. It's powered by Chevy's venerable 6.2 liter pushrod V8 LS3 that's rated for 426 horsepower and 420 pound foot of torque. This Camaro is good for a 4.5 second 0 to 60 and a 12.9 second quarter mile, which makes it a hair quicker than a standard Camaro SS according to Car and Driver. Now even though there's some snow flurries coming down, you'll see we actually get really good traction after warming up the tires. tries to hang on, but in stock form, it's just no match for this Mustang. Next we'll be racing a 2019 Ford Mustang Bull. This Emerald Beauty is powered by a third gen Coyote that borrows a couple parts from the Shelby GT350 to produce an impressive 480 horsepower and 420 pound foot of torque. And luckily for me, these six gen bullets only come with a six speed manual transmission. Mustang pulls hard early on, but the bullet starts reeling me in once we get into triple digits. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, we've got a race on our hands. Let's roll up our windows, get some more runway in front of us, and try this again. Then this happened. Although 
Although I was slightly short shifting on our first race, I don't have an explanation for the sudden large discrepancy in performance. I confirmed with the other driver he was shifting above 7,000 RPM, but for whatever reason, the Bullet's performance got a little worse with each run. The final race is against my 2000 Dodge Viper GTS. This bone stock Viper handily beat a 2021 Scat Pack Challenger with a 392 and an 8 speed auto from a dig. Now although this Viper still doesn't have any aftermarket parts on it, it does have a custom tune which increases the output of its ginormous 8 liter V10 to about 480 horsepower and 530 pound foot of torque. Mustang holds strong in first and second, but as we approach triple digit speeds, the Viper's massive torque, better aerodynamics, and functional ram air intake come into full effect. Big thank you to Garrett, Matt, Dwayne, Anthony, and especially Caesar, who drove all the way from Sacktown to the middle of the Nevada desert to help me make this video. And huge props to Dust and at Street to Stand, who is one of a handful of tuners in the world who's been able to squeeze over 400 wheel horsepower out of an NA 3 valve on pump gas.